it's Dr. Christine Kazmar here, and how are you? <laughs> Just finished my shift, if you will, at my office. And uh, so happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, me first, and then we'll go into today's whiteboard action, which I'm going to talk to you about uh, a story that happened in practice today. So at any rate, before I get to that, thanks for watching the replay. My name is Dr. Christine Kazmar. I am known as the Digestion Doc, and I help people regain their freedom from the crappiest, yes, crappiest health conditions like Crohn's, colitis, IBS. And what really sets me apart is I'm really interested in what's going on with the body from a cause standpoint, like what's causing, what is the source of stress, what is the root cause of stress versus mainstream medicine, which likes to treat symptoms all day long. And so this actually happened today in practice. One of my, one of my uh, dearest patients, I kind of think of her as like a second mom. <laughs> I've been seeing her for a long time. In fact, my mom used to work with her. So, and they're the same age and everything like that. But, but, but I digress. But anyways, so she came in today and uh, she had a really uh, concerned look on her face. And uh, she said, I, I have to run some things by you. I'm like, sure, shoot, what do you got? And she's like, I'm really concerned because I met with my medical doctor um, because I wanted to do uh, a heart stress test. February was, was heart month, heart, heart health. And so I wanted to, to be preventive and go get some tests, which by the way, my disclosure, I think that's great. I think that's great. And uh, she said, anyways, uh, my blood pressure came back at 140 over whatever and 150 over whatever on the other side. And so the doctor uh, wrote me out a prescription for Cardizem. And so if you guys are watching, some other common names for this are uh, Verapamil, Norvasc. These are calcium channel blockers. And I'm going to do the whiteboard action to show you how this is tied into your gut and to digestion in just a moment. But first, I want to give you a little bit of background about why I'm going to do this video today. Uh, and so I'm like, okay, so does that sound like this is something that you want to do? Because full disclosure, I'm not a medical doctor. I uh, don't belong dispensing medical advice when it comes to prescription drugs. But when patients ask me my opinion of things, I tell them, right? And so I'm like, how does this seem to you? I mean, are you thinking that this is going to really address, address the root cause of this problem? She's like, no, I don't think so. I think it's just patching something up. I'm like, yes. And so I said, you're under a lot of stress because she is. Um, we all are, but she, she has a lot to do um, you know, with, with her husband's health. He has some things going on that she's been taking care of for a while now. He had a stroke several years ago. And so that there's a lot of, of involvement there for her, extra things on her plate. But what I'm going to talk to you about today is what I'm going to head into now, which is talking about how this happens and why uh, I want you to, to really think about calcium channel blockers and whether or not you feel like that makes sense to you. Does that sound right that we want to be blocking calcium uh, from getting into our cells? So what I'm going to do is unclip here and uh, bring this over and do some whiteboard action and uh, flip this around and then I'll, I'll answer some questions later. Uh, but I don't see any questions. So um, I don't see any hearts or anything. So guys, try just throwing something in to say hi. You probably already are. Oh, that is not going to work. Hang on one second. I'm gonna, you guys are going to see my sky. <laughs> All right, this cap was way too tight. There's no way I can do it. So yeah, I'm bummed out. This is happening again on my Facebook Live where I can't see. Oh, there we go. Lisa, hi, Lisa. All right. I'm glad I get to see you. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching the replays. And um, I'm starting to see stuff now too. Hi, Sonia. Nice to see you as well. So let me go ahead. I'm not going to necessarily see your questions, but I'll come back and look in a minute. Um, but I want to give you guys some, some perspective about what I'm talking about with calcium channel blockers, high blood pressure, angina, these types of things, and, and then I'll come back and answer questions, okay? All right, hi Mary. All right, so first, things I, first thing I wanna do is I just wanna show you. So if I have a cell in the body, okay, the mineral that dominates inside the cell is potassium. Calcium to a lesser degree. What tends to happen as blood pressure increases, okay, or hypertension, or elevated BP, what tends to happen, and this is again my crude drawing, is that potassium starts to leave and calcium starts to dominate in the cell, okay? This is when you get high blood pressure. So the broken medical model in their, in their way of thinking, they think, okay, if we have too much calcium dominating inside the cell, let's, let's get people on calcium blockers, okay? So things like cardizem, Norvasc, I know many of you watching are on this, uh, Verapamil, okay? So the doctors say, let's put you on a calcium channel blocker to slow down the entrance of calcium in the cell because it's already too much in there. We don't want more calcium in there. 
we want potassium to come back, but we don't know what to do for that because we're a medical model and our way of thinking is by using medicine, not food. So their brains are thinking, okay, let's block or slow down the, the entrance of calcium into these cells. Because what that's going to then do, it's going to relax the blood vessels, calcium channel blockers do. Okay, it's gonna relax the blood vessels. And so it's going to drop the BP. And so that's the broken medical model's way of saying, hey, all right, you got uh, high blood pressure, you have hypertension, let's give you uh, this drug so that it can accomplish that and it's gonna drop your BP great, but not great, okay? And why it's not great is for this reason. If you are in something called sympathetic stress, okay, or sympathetic dominant stress, there are two aspects of your central nervous system, the sympathetics and the parasympathetics, okay? The sympathetic nervous system, this is your fight or flight response. So this is that kind of uh, aspect of life where you're driving down the road and a little kid in a tricycle pulls out in front of you, right? Instantly, you, 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 you take your breath away, you slam on the brakes, your body is doing a whole bunch of different requirements in an instant, because that's how smart the human body is to prevent us from hitting that baby in this example. Another example, um, you're at work and your boss is being a jerk. <laughs> and or an employee or, or, or whatever is being uh, an irritant to you you start getting stressed out you get into sympathetic stress you want to fight or flight right you want to fight this person or get out of there right um, I just had a great story uh, today also with one of my other patients who was telling me about a situation that happened with her boss today where he just went crazy and started yelling at her for no reason I mean it just it's wacky what can happen in the workplace but my example is that's an example of sympathetic stress or this patient that I'm talking about whose husband had a stroke, she's doing a lot more things, uh, there's a lot to manage with that. Over the course of time, the more locked into this state of stress, the state of fight or flight response that you are in, the more your body is going to lean toward acidity. So you're gonna be moving towards being acidic and you're gonna be losing your alkaline minerals, which are potassium, sodium, magnesium, okay? That, is the reason why that calcium starts to dominate in the cell and potassium starts to be reduced in the cell is in part because you are under emotional stress, you are under physical stress, or you are under chemical, environmental, nutritional stress. Do you see the difference? Mainstream medicine, the medical model is broken. It's broken because they're looking for quick fixes. They are looking at treating symptoms. They are never truly looking at this true source of stress in my example here too. So high blood pressure is very much linked to the gut when you understand that the autonomic nervous system has a lot to do with the gut, okay? So as you are under this stress for, for longer and longer and longer periods of time, whether it's finances, whether it's your boss, whether it's your, your spouse, whether it's your partner, whatever it is, if you are not doing anything to fix or correct this emotional stress in my example, you are going to be locked into that state where your shoulders are tight, your, your, your shoulders are up by your ears, your mid-back is where the, the sympathetic nervous system uh, neurology exists, is in your thoracic spine. And the longer you are left in that state of stress, the more you're going to lose your alkaline minerals. You're going to lose, you're going to be giving up your potassium, your magnesium, your sodium. So the more stress you are under, the more plants you need to be eating. Let me say that again. The more stress you are under, the more plants you need to be eating, fruits and veggies, okay? You're, you're in, and also beans, things like that, nuts, things like that. You need to be eating these foods. So let me turn this back around and uh, we'll do another little demonstration, a little drawing here. I'll come back and get some questions. Okay, so just to kind of review. So I'm talking about sympathetic dominance. Okay, sympathetic dominance means you're becoming acidic. And this is where cancer can live. So if you're here for too long, this is where cancer can live. And so when you're under sympathetic dominance, if I'm drawing a little body right here, okay, all the neurology of the mid thoracic spine control the sympathetics. So what do we have in there? If I have the nerves, let me just show it to you this way. Here I have a skull, okay? Here's the, uh, the cervical spine, and then here's the thoracic spine. These 12 bones right there are the mid-back where your ribs attach. attach. So I'm, my hands are not big enough, but pretend you have 12 bones right here. This is your thoracic spine. And these nerves, they continue to branch off. They're cut for this demonstration, but these nerves branch off, and they, they control 
in this thoracic spine, you've got nerves that control your lungs, your heart, your liver, your pancreas, your spleen, your stomach, your gallbladder. All the neurology of those organs are coming from this thoracic spine, the area of the spine that controls the sympathetics, okay? So when you're under that kind of tension like that in this mid-back, T1 through T12, I know this is probably more than you bargained for, but I know a lot of you appreciate this kind of thing. So in that mid-back, this controls the sympathetics. So we're talking, it's gonna control gallbladder, liver, stomach, all those organs I, that I mentioned earlier. Okay. And so you are also gonna be losing your alkaline minerals like your sodium, your potassium, your magnesium. So you're gonna be depleting these, these minerals when you're under this kind of stress. Okay, you're gonna be depleting those minerals when you're under stress. Remember what I said to you, in a healthy cell, you want potassium, which is the symbol K, you want potassium to be dominating and a little bit less calcium. When you have hypertension, you have calcium starting to dominate and potassium is not where it should be. So mainstream medicine wants to block calcium with calcium channel blockers to slow down the entrance of more calcium but what they really should be doing is looking at how can we have potassium restore back to the body. And so how do you restore potassium back to the body? How do you start stopping this process of losing your alkalinity? while well, you're gonna eat plants, okay? You are going to reduce your emotional stress. So whether that's through meditation, exercise, whatever that happens to be, this is, again, this is the whole goal to naturally improve your potassium so that you're gonna regulate your blood, blood pressure. A gigantic thing you need to be doing if you are somebody who either is on these drugs or does not wanna ever be on these drugs if your blood pressure is a little out of elevated is you want hydration to be really tuned up. So you should be closer to 96 ounces a day of water, okay? Give or take, depending on your weight and so forth. Um, but these are some strategies to get calcium or I'm sorry, potassium to increase in the cell and to lower calcium, okay? So eating plants, because these are full of your potassium, your calcium, your magnesium, your um, sodium. These are good, alkaline minerals are good. Okay, we want them. W look at what's causing your stress emotionally because that's what's locking you into that fight or flight response. Hydration is huge. The other thing you wanna do to help uh, improve this whole hypertension thing is you want to get chiropractic adjustments because I just talked to you about this. This whole area right here, and I hope I don't lose my battery power because it gave me a warning, but the whole point of chiropractic guys is that we understand as chiropractors that your spine, your spinal column protects your nerves. If the bones of the spine have moved out of position, when they move out of position, they are stretching muscles. You have five straps of muscles that attach onto your spine. When the bone moves out of place, it's stretching now a muscle. Think of a, a rubber band that you're stretching. And when that muscle stretches, it inflames, it enlarges, it pinches this nerve in this example. So if this, if this nerve controls my stomach, do you think that if there's pressure on this nerve, it's going to work better or worse? It's going to work worse. So the electrical signal coming from the brain down the spinal cord out through this nerve, if there's pressure on this nerve, that message now is going to be altered. So a chiropractic adjustment is going to help reduce that alteration. It's going to help to tune up that message. So, so I hope that makes sense. So, see you, Sue. <laughs> Sue's leaving for the day. So I hope that makes sense that when you look at something even like high blood pressure, most of you watching wouldn't even think that there's a connection at all to high blood pressure and digestion. There absolutely is. So foods that are amazing sources of potassium are gonna be your green leafy vegetables, celery, cucumber, cilantro, don't forget your herbs. And when you use your herbs, don't just put a few little sprigs, use a lot of it, okay? When you buy a, a cilantro, don't just use a few little of the, you know, sprigs of it, like I said, or the leaves, use the whole dang thing. <laughs> so those are amazing sources of potassium. So are avocados, um, I'm not sure if I said cucumbers, but potatoes are actually good sources of uh, potassium. Bananas are great sources of potassium and magnesium and so forth. So be looking at the body as a whole. Don't get scared because that was the main thing is that this doctor really scared this patient of mine. Um, and they, she got two bottles, not just one bottle of cardizum, but she got two bottles in the mail of it. She hasn't started taking it yet, which is great. Um, so it's just a matter of rethinking what's the root cause here? Why is my blood pressure 140 or whatever, which is even that severe, but still this doctor rushed 
to give her this prescription medication without talking at all about nutrition, without talking at all about emotional stress, without talking at all about things that she could do, um, you know, to hydrate or even alternative therapies like chiropractic, acupuncture, uh, massage therapies, any of these things. And so the last thing I want to talk about before I um, answer your questions is I just want to tell you some of the side effects of these drugs, okay? And I'm going to turn this around. So some of the side effects of, uh, of Cardizam, um, Norvas, Verapamil are headaches, fatigue, dizziness. Check this out. Congestive heart failure. This is a high alert drug, this Cardizam. And it's a high alert drug. And one of the things that makes it high alert is congestive heart failure as well as acute renal failure. Okay, so renal means kidneys. Does that sound like it's something that you want to do? <laughs> Again, you have to make the call. It's your body, not your doctor's. My job is, I'm talking about the broken medical model and I'm letting you know that there are alternatives, guys. It's always your decision, okay? I forgot the A and nausea, um, diarrhea, constipation, rash. These are just some of the side effects that you can look at in the uh, physician's desk reference. I'll show you my book I got here. This is what I'm going by. Okay, this is my Mosby's Drug Guide for Nursing Students. I get these every year because they get updated. Um, so this is my 20, yeah, this is 2017, okay? So that's what I have for you right now. Let me put my cap on so that I can and I don't lose my ink. <laughs> All right, let me see. Oh yeah, my cap dropped. Shoot, I'll have to remember it later. All right, so let me go plug in because I'm gonna lose my battery power and that'll answer you guys' questions. <laughs> so yeah, ask your questions now because there's a 10 second delay and that'll give me plenty of time to get this uh, plugged in. Okay. All right, let's see what we got. Yes, Royal, that's also on this list of calcium channel blockers, amlodipine. It's also in that same class, a, ch a calcium channel blocker. Uh, Kathy says, what do you think of low carb or keto diet for blood pressure? I think that's great. I think that's not just for low blood pressure, but I think that's a great diet for a lot of people. Uh, Kathy says, docs just don't seem to care anymore. Unfortunately, I think that there's a lot to that. And as well as insurance is a very, um, it's a big disruptor in good patient care. So a lot of these medical doctors are, they're, they're chained up to the pharmaceuticals, I'm sorry, to the insurance companies and the pharmaceuticals, and that really dictates the kind of care that they render, unfortunately. Uh, Darylin says, very helpful, awesome. Robin says, so eating chocolate and drinking wine in the linen closet isn't an option? <laughs> Robin, I will tell you this, uh, if, that, if that chocolate gives you a little bit of a, um, if it soothes you a little bit, especially a high quality dark chocolate, then go ahead and do it. Uh, if getting in the closet gets you away from all the chaos and the cacophony of your home, then do it. <laughs> Jordan says, I want to go outside and get my bare feet on that ground outside right now. That's great. Earthing is amazing. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Jennifer. Kathy, Linda, Mary, <laughs> Robin again, Margie, Lisa, Mildred. Hi, everybody. Mary again. Just trying to say hi to everybody. Cool. So I hope you guys, this makes sense. Let me see if there's any other questions here. Um... Elizabeth says, what if you had gastric bypass? So here's the thing. If you've had gastric by bypass, you more than anyone else, I'm sorry, I've been shaking my phone like crazy, you guys. I know you must be getting dizzy. <laughs> if you had a, a gastric bypass, you more than most people need nutritional support uh, because things are just not going to be plugged up the way, that they're not going to be plugged in the way that they once were. Okay, things have been altered, they've been tampered with. So you're gonna have even more benefit by taking digestive enzymes. You're gonna need to take the proper amounts of vitamins and minerals so that you're gonna um, kind of usurp that rewiring, if you will, that replumbing that was done on you. So even more important for somebody with gastric bypass. Linda, yeah, Cardizem is one of these channel, uh, calcium channel blocker, calcium channel blockers, Amlodipine, Verapamil, Norvask, Cardizem, these are among many of uh, the classification of drugs called calcium channel blockers. Kathy says, recovering from a bacterial infection from Mexico, you thought you were going to die. I, I send you speedy healing thoughts. Make sure you hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. More onions, garlic, cayenne pepper, lemons in your water. These are antibacterial, uh, antifungal, antiparasitic. Diane says, what about top, um, what about bl blood pressure meds and gastroparesis? So understand something. 
Medications are never going to heal your body. Gastroparesis is the condition where you have slow stomach emptying. So when we eat heat treated food, I'm an enzyme nutritionist. So this is what I work with all the time are people who have gastroparesis or, or Crohn's colitis. I, I help support the digestive system with food because food is the real medicine. So when you're taking any kind of medication, it's not going to heal your body. It's going to rob Peter to pay Paul. So in so doing, medications are going to leach calcium. They're going to leach potassium. They're going to leach iron. They're going to leach, uh, you know, any different mineral that you could imagine from your body. So that's not going to behoove you to digest your food better when you're taking a toxic toxin like a prescription drug. I just want to show you guys something. One of my uh, one, one of my staff members, her mom, was on all these meds. And over the course of time, this uh, this patient of mine has been taking these drugs away from her mom without her mom knowing it. And she's accumulated this kind of a stash. Okay? It's ridiculous how broken the medical model is. This is why I'm here. If you find value in this information or you know someone that would dig this, share this out. I really appreciate you guys sharing this video out. Because enough is enough. Okay? I mean, just, just square right into this camera. I'm saying to you, enough is enough. And so this is why I do what I do, you guys. I do why, what I do because there are natural alternatives and there are way safer and healthier things to do than prescription meds. Having said that, every case is not the same. There are some absolute situations where these types of drugs will be beneficial, but not as much as you may think, okay? And I can tell you with certainty that there is not a doctor in the world, there's not a doctor on this planet Earth who knows how every single one of these drugs taken at the same time interact in the human bloodstream. Not one doctor in the earth can tell you how safe or unsafe this is, okay? Well, I mean, unsafe would be a much more a likely uh, report that someone can give. But that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, and I see that all the time. I see patients who are over 60, over 70, over 80, taking 12, 14, 18 prescription drugs. And what do you, why do you think that these people are coming to see me with diarrhea or constipation? Because these, these prescription drugs are traumatic to the human digestive system. All right, let's see what else we got here. You're welcome, Royal. You're welcome, Judy. Debbie says, any herbal teas for blood pressure okay? Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of any kind of white tea, green tea, they're high uh, antioxidant. As far as blood pressure goes, I'd, I'd say you would really wanna be drinking water. It's gonna hydrate you better than, than tea will. Yeah, you're gonna get some water from your tea. But you'd be surprised at how drinking enough water will lower your blood pressure too. But it's about getting to the root cause. Why is your blood pressure elevated? That's what really needs to be addressed, not let's cover up the symptom with a calcium channel blocker. That's ignorance, okay? It's ignorance. And it's further ignorance when the medical profession won't even give you dietary suggestions. It's further ignorance when the doctor won't even talk to you about your emotional set of stress. It's further ignorance when they won't tell you to uh, you know, exercise, to meditate, um, to watch who you're hanging around with. It's just, they're just completely ignoring all of these things and going for this sad, sad toxic drug which can cause congestive heart failure, which can cause kidney failure, all right? I don't, and the, and the sad thing is this drug is like $8. So guess how many people are taking these types of drugs? A lot, why? Because they are actually the drugs that are affordable, but very expensive when it comes to what it does to your health. All right, let's see here. Um, Robin says, one office visit with a high blood pressure doesn't uh, constitute an, uh, a drug for BP meds. A workup would have been better. I changed doctors. Awesome, good job. Sarah says, um, polypharmacy is such a huge, huge problem. I agree. Uh, Kathy says, I have upper respiratory infection, asthma. My doc wants me to take antibiotics. No, what do you suggest I take? So here's what I suggest is, um, you know, food is the real medicine, and I suggest my classics when it comes to any kind of antibacterial thing, and that is garlic, onions, cayenne pepper, lemons, okay? Uh, the, the, there are just so many foods that are out there. If you just even Google what foods are, anti, are naturally antibiotic. Um, but another thing that I recommend to all my patients is my product called Smart Lymph. Uh, this is a protein enzyme. Protein helps to clean the blood and does a lot of, of other amazing things. But good for you, Kathy. Good for you for rejecting. Mary says, oh my gosh, that's how much meds I was on. Is it, Mary? Yeah, so... I mean, I don't even know how many bottles are in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's at least 15 in here. Okay. All right. Um, Mildred says, I hear so much about natural oils. What do you think of these and how do you incorporate them into diet? Mildred, that's a great question. I'm a fan of essential oils. I don't sell essential oils here, but I recommend them all the time. Um, so there are plenty of people that you can connect with for that. But um, also there's a lot, of in, a lot of research that's available to you nowadays too. Hey, Dr. Nikki, how are you? Nice to see you. 
Uh, Diane says, where can I get more information on diets for gastroparesis? My mom has really bad uh, gastroparesis. So Diane, Diane, what I would say is go to virtualdigestiondoc.com. That's my virtual site where I help people all over the world. Work with me one-on-one -on -one with a consultation. And then I would recommend most likely my leaky gut test kit, which is a very specific urinary collection to find out how you're digesting food. Why I say that is I could recommend 15 different diets to you, but what matters most is can you digest it? Can you digest apples? Can you digest uh, pumpkin or cucumbers? Not if you're having a struggle digesting fats. So those would be certain foods that are healthy that I would have you omit for two weeks. So it's not about what diet do I give you. It's more so where are you digestively stressed? What nutrients are you not properly digesting? So it's not even food allergy testing. I used to do that, quit after a couple of months, it wasn't working. It wasn't until I got into macronutrient testing, fats, carbs, proteins, your macronutrients, and found out what my patients are or are not, are not digesting that everything clicked, okay? So that's what I'd recommend for you for that, but great question. All right, last question is from Kathleen. She says, loving this information, I have severe psoriasis, and every dermatologist uh, said, food has nothing to do with it. I found that not to be the case. So Kathleen, this is another example of the ignorance that's out there that's pervasive. The medical model is so broken when any doctor says that diet has nothing to do our digestion has nothing to do with psoriasis, eczema, Crohn's colitis. I hear that way more than you would even like to know and it makes me sick to my stomach. Because your diet, what you are eating, has a lot to do with what's going on with you. Remember, you are not what you eat, you are what you digest, okay? So you are not what you eat. The phrase, you are what you eat, false. Better said, you are what you digest. And so that's where it really starts. So doctors who say that kind of thing, you need to get a different doctor. Good morning, Andrew, how are you? Nice to see you. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Annie. Annie, how are you feeling, sweetheart? I, I just started looking at your email. I have to finish it. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate that. Hi, Susan. God, you guys are all dropping in now. Sarah, nice to see you. All right, you guys. So thanks for being with me. Hi, Wilma. <laughs> it's great seeing you guys. Please share this out if you found value in it. Again, my name is Dr. Christine Kazmar, helping you find natural solutions so that you don't have to rely on a lot of these drugs, which are just absolutely not the answer at all. Um, if you guys are in the Shelby Township, Sterling Heights area on March 15th, come see the movie. I'll be hosting it in the movie theater, like a real movie, because it is. And we're going to be viewing the movie Trace Amounts. It's about mercury, autism, and the hidden truth. Would love to see you there. If you want to get your free tickets, uh, just call our office at 586-685-2222. That's March 15th at 7.30. We'd love to see you. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Linda. You are welcome. So remember, love yourself healthy, guys. It all starts right here. If you are not loving yourself, if you are not valuing yourself, that's going to create sickness below. All right? So your thoughts have everything to do with what I was talking about today. You don't want to be locked into sympathetic stress or that sympathetic dominance where you're stressed out all the time about everything. So this really applies to my, my closing phrase, which is love yourself healthy. All right? So one final thing, if you want my daily email where we talk about things like this and more little micro bits of health information, go to bit.ly forward slash Christine Daily Dose. Okay? Bit.ly forward slash Christine Daily Dose. And I'm going to write that down so you can see it. Oh my gosh, I'm like almost tripping 5 million times on this video. <laughs> I got this tripod behind me and I like literally tripped it on it 5 or 6 times. If you want my daily email, it's bit.ly, capital C, Christine Daily Dose. So notice these are capital, C, D, and D are capital. Bit.ly, Christine Daily Dose, that's my final thing I'll tell you. I love you guys, thanks for watching, share this out. And uh, take control of your health. That's my final lesson. <laughs> you got it, you guys. Thank you. Have a great rest of your Wednesday.